Welcome to this series for your preparation on DSPSC uh, groups exam. Today's topic will be covering logical reasoning. We will be covering the various type of questions from numeric to uh, general knowledge based. Let's get into the topic. So the first, so the first question says, if tall is equivalent to circle, advocates to triangle, and strong is square, then in indicate which number will represent strong advocates only. Okay, so here we have a diagram and we have uh, three different geometric figures. One is the circle, one is the triangle and one is the square. And so the question is asking us which area or which number, each number here, 1, 2, 3, 4 through 7 represents a certain area. Either it is overlapping with two figures or three figures or just single, single geometric figures. So the question is asking which number represents strong advocates. So strong is equivalent to square. So let's just look at the square region. So here, this is the square region. So this is strong and they're asking strong advocates and advocates is equal to, is e equivalent to triangle. So this is triangle. So here the overlap of advocates and strong is this area here. So when we look at this area, we have two numbers. We have four, we have seven. Okay, but seven is the overlap of three geometric figures that is the circle, the square and the triangle. But the question is asking strong advocates only. So if we want only two groups, so if we want only two groups, it is this area here. So the answer is option C, four. Four represents strong advocates. Let's look at the next question now. So the question says, refer to the pie chart and answer the question. Sales of X brand jeans by different stores in 2015 is given by this pie chart. Here we see that there are different stores, A, B, C, D, E, F, and the total number of items that are sold is given equal to 42,000. And the question is asking, what is the average number of sales done by A, B, C, and F together? So if we look at A, B, C, F, we know that A has done 18% of the sales, B has done 22% of the sales, C has done 28% of the sales, and F has done 16% of the sales. So if we sum this up, the total will come out to be 84%. So when we know that the entire total number of sales, uh, number of items sold is 42,000, that means 100% of the sales is equal to equivalent to 42,000 items. So we want A, B, C and F. So for A, B, C and F, the sum comes out to be 84%. We need to find out what is it sold. So the sum of A, so the sum of A, B, C, F is nothing but 84 by 100 into 42,000. So that comes out to be 84 into 420. Now uh, observe what the question is asking. It is asking what is the average number of sales done by them. So here we have the sum, but we have how many stores? A, B, C, F. We have four stores. So for the average sales, we need the sum that is 84 into 420 divided by 4. So when we divide this, you will get 4 twos are 4 ones are 21 into 420 comes out to be 8820. So the answer is option A. Let's look at the next question now. Asha remembers that her sister Nisha's birthday is after 19th but before 22nd of April. Whereas her father remembers that Nisha's birthday is after 20th but before 24th of April. Which day of April does Nisha's birthday fall? So what does Asha remember? Asha remembers that the birthday is after 19th. So what do you mean after 19th? Either it can be 20th or it can be 21st, but it is also before 22nd, right? So either it has to be on 20, 20th or 21st. Whereas the father, the father remembers that it is after the 20th, but before 24th. So according to uh, father, the birthday is either on 
21st because it's after the 20th so 21st 22nd 23rd or 24th so if we put the knowledge of both these people together we can uh, conclude that nisha's birthday is on 21st so the answer is option c let's look at the next question now in the following sequence of alphabets which letter would be 10th to the left of the letter which is 15th from the right okay so for this first we need to figure out which letter is 15th from the right so if you see the rightmost letter is z and if you're counting 15 you will see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so this is the letter which is 15th from the right and we need to see the letter which is 10th to the left of this letter so we have some letters to the right of this and some letters which are left of this so we need to see the 10th letter that is from the left of this so let's count 10 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we come at b the answer option is b so basically uh, instead of going about counting it we can just say that 15th from the right would be any any random al alphabet instead of counting it so let's just say the 15th position and then they're saying 10th to the left of the letter so if you add another 10 so we need to move left more left so if we add 10 so that means you want to know which is the 15th alphabet from the right so 15th alphabet uh, sorry 25th alphabet we know that there are total 26 alphabets right okay so the 26th alphabet is a from the right if we count and the 25th is b so you can easily just say b instead of counting the alphabets so that's another way of solving this let's look at the next question now Nina walks 25 meters westward then she turns to her left and walks 20 meters and then turns to her right and walks 10 meters she again turns to her right and walks 20 meters what is the distance walked by her and in which direction is she facing now okay so let's just say this is the starting point of Mina. we know that uh, let's keep our directions in mind here which is north south east west okay so first she walks 25 meters west so she walks this in this direction 25 meters now she turns to her left so if she's walking in this direction if she has to turn left she will turn this side that is south so now she turns to her left and walks 20 meters so here she walks south 20 meters now she turns to her right from here if she turns to her right she will be walking westward again so she walks again 10 meters in this direction and she again turns to her right and walks 20 meters so from here if she turns to her right she will again walk northward so here she walks again 20 meters so basically this is her starting point a this is our ending point b and there what is the question asking what is the distance walked by her so the entire distance is 25 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 that is uh, 45 55 65 75 so it is total 75 meters and now they're asking which direction is she facing because the last direction that she was walking was northward so from here right now she's facing north so this answer option is b let's look at the next question now what will come at the place of the question mark so we here we have a series of numbers 4 7 12 19 28 and and the last one is a question mark so let's see the pattern here so from 4 to 7 we have plus 3 from 7 to 12 we have plus 5 from 12 to 19 we have plus 7 and from 19 to 28 we have plus 9 so we see that the numbers are in increasing and how are they increasing every time we are adding an odd number and this odd number is in the right sequence it's in the incremental sequence so three five seven nine what is the next odd number we know 11 so if we see in place of the question mark we will get 28 plus 11 which is 39 which is answer option b 
Let's look at the next question now. Okay, there is a series. Uh, study the following number series and find out how many numbers can be accommodated in the series if the series begins with triple one and ends at two zero one. Okay, first we need to identify what pattern does the series follow. So here again, triple one plus what is one one four? You are adding three. 114 plus again another plus 3 gives 117. 117 plus 3 is 120. So basically we're just increasing the number by 3 every time. So here they're asking us how many numbers are there. Let's say if we just want to see if it's triple 1 ending at 120, how will we count the number of uh, this, uh, the number of, uh, the number of numbers that are here so we will just subtract 111 from 120 that is comes out to be 9 and we will divide it by 3 so we will get 3 but the number of uh, numbers here between triple 1 and 120 is 1 2 3 4 so you will always have to add a plus 1 to get the exact number of numbers that are between two numbers following the exact sequence. If you uh, take any consecutive number, if you add 123 as the next number and use the same logic, you will know that this is the logic it follows. First, you take the difference divided by the common factor, the common incremental factor, and then you will add a plus one. So here to find the number, how many numbers are there, we will subtract the first digit from the last First uh, number from the last number that is 201 minus triple 1 which is nothing but 90. Now if you divide 90 by 3 you will get 30 and you will add a 1 at the end so you will get 31. So there are total 31 numbers between both in this series from triple 1 to 201. So the answer is option B. Let's look at the next question now. In the following question, there are two statements followed by four conclusions. You have to take the two given statements to be true, even if they seem to be at variance from commonly known facts, and then decide which of the given conclusion logically follows from the two given statements disregarding commonly known facts. So the statements are A, all lions are dogs, B, so the statements are A, all lions are dogs, B, some dogs are tigers. And the conclusions given are some lions are tigers, some dogs are lions, no lion is a tiger, all dogs are lions. So basically let's look at the statements first. So they're saying that if you take any lion, so all, every lion is equivalent to a dog. Okay, and they're saying few, some dogs, not all dogs, okay. They're saying few dogs are tigers. So let's look at the conclusions one by one. So can we say that some lions are tigers? Okay, so we know that every lion is a dog. So out of this, there can be few dogs few lions who are called dogs and then those dogs can be tigers so there definitely can be some lions who are tigers so this conclusion seems valid okay now let's look at the next next conclusion some dogs are lions so uh, yeah definitely if you're saying that every lion is a dog so there are definitely few dogs some dogs which are lions there can be some dogs which are not lions as well but there are definitely some dogs which are lions so these two seem to be true now let's look at the third conclusion no lion is a tiger okay so you cannot conclusively say that no lion is a tiger because there can be say a lion which is uh, a lion x which is a dog and the same dog can be one of the few dogs which is a tiger. So it could be that there is a lion x which is a tiger. So this is not a valid conclusion. So let's look at the fourth conclusion. All dogs are lions. So here be careful. We know that all lions are dogs. But there can be few dogs which are not lions, okay? There can be a uh, few dogs which are uh, ti which are tigers, which are not lions. So obviously, fourth is also not true. 
so out of all of these let's see only option one is correct because one and two are following the conclusion statements but two and uh, definitely four is not true and um, one and three is also not true and definitely all do not follow okay so that's the answer answer number option number one let's look at the next question now so it's uh, the same again you are given a statement and you have conclusions we have to see which conclusion follows the statement accurately so the statement is uh, population increase coupled with uh, depleting resources is going to be the scenario of many developing countries in the days to come and the conclusions are the population of developing countries will not continue to increase in the future and the second conclusion is it will be very difficult for the governments of developing countries to provide its people decent quality of life okay so given this statement it clearly says the population increase coupled with depleting resources that means the population is seen that in the future it will increase okay so this statement number one is a direct contradiction of the statement uh, conclusion number one is a direct contradiction of the statement so definitely that is not going to follow statement one and uh, the second one uh, conclusion says it will be very difficult for the governments to of developing countries to provide its people decent quality of life yes exactly so this is a conclusion that we can say from the statement because it is the statement is saying population increase uh, coupled with depleting resources is making the scenario of developing countries uh, worse okay so um this is what it is predicting so statement number two is following the statement uh, conclusion number two is following the statement correctly so the answer is option two let's look at the next question the following consists of a question and two statements decide whether the information provided in the statements is sufficient to answer the question so the, in a row of five children p q r s and t who is who is standing in the middle so okay so the question is asking us to figure out who is standing who is standing in the middle there are five children okay so the first statement says that s is to the immediate right of t so let's say t is here and s is to the immediate right of t so s is here and q is to the immediate left of t so q is here okay so this is the information given we know this arrangement but who who else is left out p and r are left out so if we say that p is standing here and r is standing here then we know that we can say that t is standing in the middle but there could be another op, uh, uh, combination where qts is standing like this as given in statement a but then p and r are standing here so from this arrangement we know that s is in the middle so here we have an ambiguity and we cannot definitely answer the question who is standing in the middle so a alone is not sufficient to answer this question now b alone say b is saying that q is to the extreme left so if q is to the extreme left we have no other information of how the remaining five uh five children are standing so remaining four children are standing so definitely we cannot conclude who is standing in the middle by using b alone now let's look at both of these statements together if we know that qts are standing like this q then t then s and we know that q is the extreme left so we know that q t s stand here and p and r can take any of these two positions because q has to be to the extreme left so we know there are two children on to the right of s and two children to the left of s so definitely s is the middle person standing in this q so uh, in this uh, line so definitely we need both a and b together to sufficiently answer the question so the answer is option 3 let's look at the next question the following consists of a question and two statements uh, again this is a data sufficiency question so the question is asking how much was the total sale of the company and the two statements given are company store sold 8000 units of product a and each cost 25 rupees so uh, from the statement a we can say uh, from product a itself the uh, sale of the company is 25 rupees into 8000 
सो बट देर इज अ क्वेश्चन दैट देर कुड बी अ प्रोडक्ट बी अ प्रोडक्ट एक्स और अ प्रोडक्ट वाई विच कुड हैव एडेड टू द सेल्स ऑफ द कंपनी सो वी डू नॉट नो वॉट द टोटल सेल्स ऑफ द कंपनी आर फ्रॉम द इन्फॉर्मेशन गिवन इन ए अलोन now if you look at statement b alone the company has no other product line this statement on its own makes no sense at all so that's why uh, b alone can also not answer the question so if you put a and b together we know that product a sold uh, 8000 units into 25 rupees each so we know the sales of that and from b we know that there is no other product so bxy any other uh, product is uh, not possible so we know the total sales is equal to the sales of product a and that's why both a and b together are sufficient to answer the question let's look at the next question now study the numbers in the given table and find the logic and arrangement and find out what should come in place of the question mark so here you have 7 14 42 14 28 84 28 56 One sixty-eight. Okay, so if we see the pattern, we know that seven into two is fourteen. Fourteen into two is twenty-eight. Okay, again, fourteen here. Fourteen into two is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight into two is fifty-six. Forty-two into two is eighty-four, and eighty-four into two is one sixty-eight. So basically, we're just multiplying two across the rows to get. to the next column so you have uh, so 28 into 2 is nothing but 56 so this will be 56 56 into 2 is nothing but uh, 112 so this will be 112 168 into 2 is nothing but 216 216 12 13 2 1 3 36 so the answer is option c let's look at the next question now so this is again a table we have a question mark The pattern is pretty simple. You have A Z B Y C X. So here the first alphabets, if you look at them, they're incremental. A B C D E F G, and then if the question mark one there, it would be an H, and then you have an I here. And if you look at the second alphabets, you see that it is counting down from the uh, reverse side. So this is Z Y X W V U. So obviously it will be S here. so the answer is option b next question now uh so we have um sort of a diagram here and they're asking the uh, to find the missing number okay so if we look at this we see it's like a cyclic progression the numbers are increasing this way and here we have 8 into 2 is 16 16 uh but then 16 into 2 is 32 but uh, we are missing something here so we can see that 8 plus 8 is 16 16 plus 8 is 24 24 plus 8 is 32 32 plus 8 is 40 40 plus 8 is 48 48 plus 8 is 56 so we're just adding 8 every time instead of multiplying by 2 so we're just adding 8 so 56 plus 8 will give us 64 the answer option is 64 another way of looking at it is all these numbers are some multiple of 8 so if you look at the answer options you can narrow down that 64 is the only multiple of 8 here those were some logical reasoning uh, questions for your preparation for the groups exam in the tspsc um, exams so hope you learned something today and they were helpful in your preparation thanks for watching